Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And I can't yell or I'll scare the birds away. I'm going to do a video right now on fountains, especially solar fountains. As spring is coming and summer is going to be here and even the fall for a lot of areas that stay nice, warm and sunny. I love my solar fountains. I know a lot of people are getting interested in setting up solar fountains. I'm not going to do a full video on all the ups and downs and, and different things right now. Basically just let's touch on some subjects. I'll see what people want to know, what you want to know. Some, some people have problems with bees and some people problem, have problems with squirrels or, or let's say even critters running around, furry little critters. We could talk about that or placement, but right now I'm going to kind of do a quick 101 and maybe some tips and ideas on solar fountains and what I'm doing. I'm sitting here, I was having coffee. I was, this is a totally unplanned video. Like usual, that's the way I do my videos. I just grab the camera and go for it. You know, whatever's in my head and thoughts. Right in front of me, where I'm sitting here and having coffee, you've got my electric one. That's my second water feature in the garden. I bought that at a thrift store. I really lucked out. It was like $20, $25. It was there. I threw myself on it, called Gary and said, bring the truck now. The first one is the ball. The one that, that I bought that actually on my birthday quite a, a few years ago. And I walked into the thrift store. That's what I did for my birthday. And they brought it in and he wanted like $15, $16. I don't remember anymore the price. And he said he didn't know if it worked, but it didn't matter to me. Now at that time, keep in mind, I knew nothing about solar fountains. I didn't even know what a solar pump was. Not a clue. I had no idea what you would do with it, how it worked. Someone that had aquariums should think about that, but I didn't know. I didn't know. So back then I only thought, well, you want a fountain, you've got to find electricity, a plug, and you got to figure out where you want to put it and placement so you can get near the electrical outlet. That's all I knew. So yes, Gary set up my first fountain and he plugged it in for me and we got it going. And then of course the second one came the same year, same thrift store. Nobody wanted it because it's so big and heavy and it's older and it's got the fish with the frogs. And I got that one and the same thing. But then I started looking at all these solar fountains, like solar pumps, what the heck is that? How does it work? So of course I ventured into looking into seeing what and how you work with a solar pump. I, I didn't know what it was. So I bought my first one and I'm going to admit I had a little issue with the first one, but I didn't buy it on eBay. I bought it somewhere else, but they took care of it and got a better one. So at first I thought, well, maybe this isn't going to work. But after I got that taken care of and got a good one, I was sold. That was it. This was going to change my life. It was unbelievable. And yes, this is live. These birds are sitting in front of me eating. And I've got some, some of the most beautiful footage this morning I did not expect of one of them drinking out of my recently made solar uh, fountain I just put up. So let's keep this short because you know me. I could just go on and talk and talk and talk. So I started with something very simple which was, I had an electric one that was sitting in the house. I don't remember where he bought it, probably a thrift store. And I took out the pump and I put in the solar and I set it outside and lo and behold, it worked. Not only did it work, I can sit it anywhere I want. I put it out here and the birds started coming to it. They were taking baths in it, they were drinking. Oh my goodness. Oh my, I was so excited. So of course from there I started doing more and more. You've seen a few of them. Oh, I'm now way past this. I'm doing all kinds of stuff, but everything has its purpose. So I'm not gonna be leaving one type of solar fountain to make another, but everything has its purpose. So as you know, I went on and I've got solar fountains now everywhere. And everybody knows like when you start something, your first one you're so proud of and it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how great that is. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's running and look at that. And, and then you start to look at it more and more and it's like, oh, it's just some rocks in a bowl, which works. 
But the point is, the more you do, the more you learn. It's fascinating, and we all do that. We learn and we figure out, this is fantastic. Oh my, and we learn. I mean, I'm looking at my first one. I, you know my first bucket? I sat out there and I kind of slopped on some paint and set it up. And I made a lot of mistakes, but you know it worked, and it's still working. But I'm not doing it like that anymore. I can do it better. And this is what we're learning. You know, I go online. I tried to find things the way I had ideas in my head. And, and I couldn't find what I wanted. Nobody was doing it with a bucket. And the reason I wanted a bucket is a bowl is fine. But with a bucket, yeah, let's say you go to work or you don't want to keep filling it. The bucket will hold water until basically you go tip it and clean it out. That's the way it works for me. And when I want to clean it, I just dump it. I just did the other one yesterday. Just put your hand in there, wash it around if it's dirty, rinse it out with a hose. But it doesn't run out of water. A small bowl, like some of the ones I have in the yard, I've got to go through when I'm watering my garden and make sure they're topped up. And sometimes I do have to top up the shallow bowls once or twice a day on hot days. So that's the difference between a bucket and a bowl. So you, you make what works for you. The, I've got bowls all over here. There's the bowl up on top. And that bowl, I get birds all day in that bowl. That's the most easiest thing anybody can put together. I do have a video on the bowl with the rocks. That's all it is, is the fountain. You don't even need all the attachments if you don't want to use it. And it just works great. I have birds coming to it all the time. Now keep in mind, when I first set it up, I had no birds, you know, at first, but not the way I thought I'd have birds coming to it. But as soon as they knew it was safe and what it was, they were all over it. So I think anybody can pretty much set up a solar fountain. Now, don't be discouraged if you set your first one up and it doesn't work. Because sometimes you may not have the solar fountain panel exactly in the right direction. Let's go take a walk now. I know I'm going to disturb all the birds. And we'll do a quick walk through it just in my garden. I know I've got more in the front garden, but we're going to just do a walkthrough. Like I said, this is totally unplanned. Let's start with this one. Here's a bucket. Now this bucket means a lot to me because my dad used to work at a pickle plant and bring home these buckets. So this bucket made in the USA is very old. And I had this attachment that I picked up from a thrift store. And see how it's just dripping? This is a mistake. Though it works, let me show you the solar panel. That's up there. I can just barely reach it. I've got it like, oh, I don't know, seven, eight feet tall. That, to me, is over, overshot. I don't need it that tall. So that's going to be changed. You need to be able to get to your solar panel. And you need to be able to wipe it down because multiple things, let's keep walking, multiple things happen. Birds perch on it and they poop on it and, or dust collects on it. And sometimes you need to simply clean the solar panel just like you would if you had it for your house. Same thing. So that is a mistake. But otherwise the bucket works, so it just needs to be changed. Same thing with the one I made up there. I thought, oh well, so adorable. I love it. But the problem is I have to shoot the hose up on that one, which is about eight feet tall, nine feet tall. And it's working. See, my bucket's working great. But again, you don't need it that tall. And a lot of times, the fountains this, you know, are sitting in a place where you've got the panel so high and you can't get to it, so you can't service it. And the panel needs to be turned towards the sun. You may not have it even angled right. There is a bucket. We're not going to get into details. I love that bucket. That bucket, let's touch on that, is all plastic. Everything in that fountain that I made is plastic. So keep that in mind, but it works beautiful. I love it. It was my newest one that I made recently and it's working fantastic. Well, we will get into details how that one was made. And that one is trickling right now. Why is it trickling and not running? Because the panel is not, I don't want to put my camera up in the sun, which is that way. The panel is not facing in the right direction. If it doesn't face in the right direction, then you get a trickle. Sometimes you get nothing. And that's okay, because as the sun moves and during the day, then your different fountains will go on full force or lightly. This one is in the sun. This one is cement. I'm so excited. I can't wait to tell you how I did that. But that's another video. This one has been fantastic. I put this out, the birds love it. But see, now the panel is over there. And this one is perfectly facing towards the sun. And then here's one that's got 
fur droppings on it because yes they do use it as a perch and you do need to clean them off and when they get dirty you just take a cloth your hand whatever you want a hose wet your hand with the hose when you're watering and wipe it down that's good enough that one's running that one even though it's got bird droppings on it it's running good then you've got this one that's a mix of plastic rocks in a bowl that I got at the thrift store now that one attracts bees and we'll get into details why that one attracts bees that's what I want to see on who needs to know what because I'm as I'm going I am learning this one does not attract bees notice the bee he's flying around he can't figure out where he's going to land and he's he's gonna disappear because he can't really he's trying but it's not really gonna work the way he wants they need a lot of places to land on and they need no splash so that we'll talk about another time so certain ones will attract bees and certain ones will not. That one attracts a little bit of bees, but not too many. And I know you want bees in your garden, but there are people that don't want bees around. So you may have to set up a fountain that does not attract bees. Now this one that I absolutely love in that chip and dip tray, also a mistake. The panel is too far up, I can't get to it. So I can't dust it and it needs a good cleaning. The bucket is easy, just tip it out, I don't know, once every couple weeks. I'll peek inside and if it's running, then running water is generally clean. If it's not running, then you have to dump it out. So that one has to be changed too. I haven't done much with it because I've been trying to get the garden straightened out. Weather's been cold, today it's beautiful. Hopefully it's gonna stay that way. And I wanna make this area with a lot of different water fountains. So you wanna think about how you wanna do it. You don't need to put your panels that high, so keep that in mind. I think the lower ones for me are doing the best. Keeping them low on a regular tomato steak, about four foot tomato steak, is perfect. And I made these holders, which are my favorite holders, using you know old cottage cheese or containers or whatever. So easy to make. I believe I got a video on that. And I like the color brown. That's my opinion. Again, everybody's got their own and the reason I like it when you step back you do not see it That one up there is green and flowers painted on it If you want to decorate it, it will stick out and you will see it If you want it to disappear you go with a brown or a dark forest green. Forest green is Gary's favorite color He said things disappear the rock one I made, and I made a video on that again a bowl some rocks and I stuck a stick in there nothing else the birds love that one. They absolutely love it. And then of course, you know, this is my electric one. This one's not working because I gotta get up there and clean that panel. And then my one of my favorites, but this is electric, is the ball one. And that's what I wanted to replicate. I'll step one more time over here and we'll get this thing together. That one I made. And that one, the hummingbirds have been all over it. I have had almost every species in the yard, not always have I had a camera, on that one. And that one, there's a whole figuration under there on how I made it, and we will get into details. That is what I replicated because I could not find a bowl. So the bowl is what the hummingbirds like. The other birds don't mind. They need to have a place to land. Another bucket. Okay, this was my first bucket. That's the one I was talking about. Kind of slop some paint around, put a little... Uh, trinket thing on top that my mom gave me and ran a hose through it. The issue with the panel here, I think it's this one, is this panel, see it needs to be cleaned up. As long as I point it right directly to the sun, it will work. So I need to do a better placement right now because when I put it here, it's not running as good. Oh, now it's been running. A few minutes ago it wasn't running. So sometimes it's the direction it's going in, but it does need some cleaning. And we'll go into cleaning panels. I've got a video on how to take the pump apart. I've only had to do it a few times if they get blocked up. And then, of course, there's another one I did a video on. And I was going to take it down because that's what's so wonderful about solar. You could redo them. I was going to take it down a few weeks ago and redo it and make something else out of it until I saw the bush tits come in one afternoon. And they love that one tucked underneath the curry plant. So for now, I'll leave it. I've got plenty of pumps. There's my original solar one. It was electric. It trickles. I've got all kinds of birds that go on it. Mockingbirds, everything. 
it just works fantastic. And of course, the one I found in the trash that somebody threw away because the pump broke, threw some rocks in there and put a solar panel on that one. I mean, I've got so many. And here's another one. Picked that one up at the grocery store. They had a coupon one day. Uh, $5 off anything that was over, anything that was $15 or more. So I got to use the coupon and I have seen birds on that as well. And then of course, another one that I picked up. I did pick this one up at the thrift store and see the panel must not be facing the right way or it needs some cleaning. It probably need, oh no, it just needed to be dusted. That's the problem. And here's another one, the candlestick one. So we're at the end of the fountains right now here. See the candlestick one? The birds get under there. And yeah, that could use a bit of cleaning too. So they're all different and they all do bring different birds. And there's different ways. Bees don't like a splash. Keep that in mind. We'll get into more details on that. Hummingbirds like a place to land, but if they can't land and the water's shooting up, they will fly through it. Like sprinklers, they will fly through it. And so that's what you need to think about as summer's approaching, or I should say spring, and the sun is starting to come up. Let me go back and sit down because and talk a little bit more and end this before I make this an hour. And then I'll have the ones, some of you that love it long are gonna go, go on, go on. And then you got the other ones that are going, oh, come on, end this already. Start thinking about your solar fountains. I, I'm gonna admit I get all mine on eBay and I have not had not one come from eBay broke. The first one I bought was not from eBay. It was from another online service. It wasn't working, but they did replace it. Okay, most of your online people will replace it. That was my very first one and my only one that wasn't working. Now, when you're setting up a bird fountain, whether you have purchased it or you're making it, not all bird fountains are created equal. You have to decide, do you want them to hang around and take a bath? Or do you want them just to come in and take a drink and leave? And some of them, to be honest, are not suitable for any of those. So you've really got to look over the bird fountain and analyze it. And that's why I bought those two from the thrift store. Because I looked at them and right away knew how they would use them. So be sure before you purchase anything, look it all over and think about it. Really, that particular topic, that could be another half hour discussion. You want to make sure that the birds have a place to land, that they feel safe. And for bathing, they need a shallow portion in the bird fountain. If there's no shallow portion in there, they can't get in there and do anything, they're not gonna swim. They don't want a swimming pool. So you've gotta think about all these different things on what you want your bird fountain to do for you in your garden. So the little bit that I wanted to talk about today is what you want to do, how you want to make it. I am now making my own fountains. I'm not going to get into details on each and every one, but I am making my own fountains and I'm having a blast doing it. I've got so many ideas in my head on how I want to do it. And I'm also thinking of what hummingbirds like and what a lot of the sparrows around here and the warblers and the scrub jays, what they all like. Uh, the doves even come in. I had a few others here that I've moved out because I'm changing them. I moved a bucket. You can see a bucket by that chair. I moved that one out because I am changing it. And that's the wonderful thing about solar. When you make it and you put it together, you can change it. You can change it because you don't like it. You can change it because you want something different. You can change it to experiment with things. It's, it's nothing but nothing. Literally, it comes with a panel and some little doodads that if you want the water to shoot up in different ways, you test it, you set it up the way you want. Most of the time, all the ones out front here that you're looking at in front of me, I really haven't used any parts. What I did do is I went to an aquarium store, which is a fish store, and I did go buy some hose that would fit. It was a dollar a foot. You don't need that much. So you go in there with your part, you see what hose fits on the little motor and or one of the attachments. You could do it that way because you can attach a piece to the motor that comes to it. You don't have to use anything. That one in the black um, flower pot on top of the flower pot here, there's nothing on that. I can walk over in a minute and show you nothing. But if you wanted to direct it somewhere like that one's directed through my cement ball, that one's from, through the bowl. Um, that one, I don't know if that one's got anything. That one's got a little hose to it. You just go get the hose, 
Uh, probably the hardware stores will carry it too. They carry a lot of it by the foot. Make sure it fits either the attachment or the pump. You might be better off if you've got an attachment to get the hose to fit to the attachment. And that's it. We'll get into more details. Like I said, I just came out here. It's early. Got a million and one things to do today. Came out here to just have some coffee. And I think what happened was I had been waiting to see what birds use that bucket I put together. And I was flabbergasted sitting here. And thank goodness I had a camera. When this scrub jay, who is so shy, and saw me sitting here because I think the siblings from last year are not as shy as the other ones, came right in while I was sitting here and took its drink twice. Came back and took its drink twice. And that was from the bucket one I put together and the hose kind of got stuck up a little more than I wanted. I was washing it yesterday and I never got back to putting it back in. Because you can, when you put a hose on, you adjust it the way you want. And I was just so excited then I picked up my camera and thought, no, we're going to talk solar fountains. So now I've gone way over I wanted. But think about it. Maybe start ordering some solar fountains. You can get them for different prices. Uh, it's the, the small ones. And they run, I've picked them up for as little as $9 when some of the people on eBay have had them on sale. eBay also has what's called eBay Bucks. There's days that they give you 10% credit so you earn money and then you have money in there every three, four months to give you the money. Um, but look around on eBay because if you're going to get it from eBay, Amazon as well, wherever you want to get it, you can't find them at the hardware stores. They don't want to carry them. And I think because they don't want to compete with the online because it's so cheap and they're, you know, when you go and buy a fountain and all that, it's quite pricey in the stores. But I heard somebody told me that they, you, they ordered it, but they paid $35. When you can go online, and like I said, I personally buy it on eBay, and I pay about 10 but I have paid as much as 15 And they do know, these people are smart, they do know that as the season comes in and spring is coming in, they sometimes raise their price. They also have multi-purchases, so if you purchase more than one, then they lower the price. So there's different ways of doing it. I would definitely say, for the first time that you're buying it, just buy one and try it. Because you get them right away. And don't buy them out of the country. That's another big warning I want to bring up. Make sure wherever you are buying it, be it eBay, Amazon, any other online site, if you are in the United States, this is the biggest thing I always say. Check the delivery date. Check the delivery date. If you are in the United States, I am right now in March, it should say I'm going to get it in one to two weeks, if not sooner. If you buy your panel from, let's say, China, out of the country, and they do list other countries as well, but it's coming from China. I've seen them list all kinds of other countries. It will then tell you you're not going to get it till April, May, or June, because they have the option to mark that. And then you'll be waiting and waiting and waiting. The other thing, too, is if you receive it broke and you've got it from out of the country and you have to deal with them or you don't like it and you want to return it, it gets a little more difficult. If you're buying from within the United States, it's really quick. They'll send you a form, you return it, and they send you a new one. Sometimes they don't even want the broken one back. So I would definitely look at that when you're going to purchase. Look at the delivery date and check, check around because a lot of people have different delivery dates. And that's the way I purchase. I purchase by the delivery date. That's basically it. That's the 101 on getting started with solar panels and solar fountains. It comes as a complete kit. Read it before you purchase any. Look at the photos, but read it and make sure it's the entire kit, which is the panel and the motor. And if you want all the parts with it, it should come in a little box with all the items in there because they also sell just the pump and some people also sell just the panel. You don't want to end up with just that because then you have nothing. You need the whole kit. And like I said, $10 to $15 is generally the price. That usually includes shipping. And then you, you try it. Hopefully you get it within the week to two weeks. You could try it as soon as the sun comes out. And you know they do work on cloudy days as long as it's not too dark. And... Um, See what you think. I think once you start playing around with solar panels and solar fountains, you're going to go nuts. I went nuts. I'm, I mean, this is my latest creation, and I've got another one coming. 
and I am so excited with that one. And I've moved it around the yard. That's the other thing that I love about solar fountains. You can move them. So let's say I like sitting here and having coffee, but I built another one, and now I've got, let's say, 20 of them in front of me, but I want to put some in the front yard. Pick it up. If they're plastic, they weigh nothing. Tip the water out, pick it up, move it to any part of the yard, move it to your friend's yard, anywhere you want, out your window, on a balcony, on a patio, move it, and then refill it with water and make sure the panel is facing the sun. That's it, you, you're good to go. With electricity, you've got to find an outlet, you've got to run extension cords, it's a whole dilemma. There's a few that do run, I heard, on batteries, but then you've got to bring in the battery, you've got to recharge it, and that's fine if you, that's what you want. I do have another video that if you do not have sun, if you don't want to run a solar panel one, you can get the same fountains that plug into a USB battery. And I have used those as well. So if you've got a patio that's completely shaded, but you want to set up a fountain, you've got the option to buy that as well. And then all you need as far as a battery is a phone charger. You can get a small one. They'll run for a couple days and then you just bring it in and charge it up when you need to charge it up. That will work too and that's in place of a solar panel. So it's kind of like whatever will work for you. And that's basically it. So there's my talk that I've already gone into almost 30 minutes. So sorry about that. But it's just the whole idea. I'm so excited with, the, with not just the feeders. As you see, I feed the birds. But the water fountains, it brings in so many birds and I, it's such a joy to watch. Here comes a little warbler right now. Oh, he heard me. He took back off into the bushes. But they're all over here, all the birds. Water is life for them. That's the number one thing they need is water, and number two they need is food. Of course, they need both, but they need water, especially as the days are going to start getting warmer. They usually take one or two baths a day, sometimes even more. And they want to come in and drink. They'll bring their babies back to drink once they find the fountain they like. You'll see them in the late spring, early summer, bringing back all their babies, showing them where the fountain is. It's just such a joy. So I've talked your ear off, and my day is starting. It's early in the morning, done with my coffee. And here's a mistake. Here, right in front of you, live mistake. Why is that fountain going to run out of water? Because it's over splashing on the side. Keep an eye on that. I've made some bucket ones where I didn't have enough holes and then it will slowly during the day lose water. It will splash out. That happens, but I'll tell you something. What really happens is birds splash it out. Easy fix. I can walk over there and just straighten it out. It's actually doing that because it's getting so much sun, but a lot of it is staying in there. So it's not going to run completely out. As it starts to run lower, it won't run as high. So that's it. You just look it over when you've got it all made. You decide if that's what you like. And like I said, solar is so easy to change. A little snip of a scissors. If you've got a hose, I can cut that hose a little bit more. Or just don't use, you know, the hose. Just use the attachments that come to it. Be careful on the attachments that come to it because they really do spray. And if you want them to spray up in the air, and they can go really, really far, like one, two, three foot high. They really can spray sometimes because their holes are so fine, that's when they'll leave the bowl. The water will definitely evaporate and leave the bowl really fast with the spray. So I don't use the spray. Um, generally, the birds here don't like the spray anyways. They like to be able to go to the trickling water, drink the trickling water, and then go on their way or feed or stay in the garden. But you try it because everybody's got their own way, and you try what works for you. With that, now you've got a long video. <laughs> Have a great day. I'm going to go get my stuff done, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.